Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello viewers, welcome back to the channel and my weekly tech news roundup. Now in today's episode, are endurance road bikes dead to the pros? BMC has a new road machine endurance bike out today. A closer look at Matteo van der Poel's race winning bike from Paris-Roubaix and Tour of Flanders. But first, let me start you with this, a special Crux custom build, which might just be the lightest gravel bike in the world. Certainly the lightest I've ever seen. So this Specialized Crux is pretty special. It's a one-off custom build by a chap called Oleg, who is clearly obsessed with weight or a lack of weight. So he started with an S-Works Crux frame, already very, very light indeed, and took the paint off, gave it a full respray. But the most interesting and perhaps alarming bit for me at least, is how he then modified both the frame and the fork to root the brake hoses inside. The Crux, as you probably know, is an externally rooted design. The brake hoses go from the handlebar to the frame. So what they've done is removed the external ports on the frame and then taken the fork and the steering tube and reinforced or added extra layers of carbon around the lower section of the steering tube and then drilled a hole into the steering tube for the brake hoses to go through the frame and through the steering tube and into the stem. I'm not sure if I'd be happy or confident doing this myself or at least riding a bike that had the work done to it, given how nobody wants a fork steering tube to fail. I'm sure they've done all they can to prevent that from happening. It certainly gives the bike a clean look and points to a future Crux update with internally rooted cabling and hosing. But part of the appeal of the Crux, as I've shared in my videos on the bike, which I own, is the simplicity of the external routing on this bike. And this really shows how popular internal routing is, that somebody has modified a frame and fork not designed for internal routing to make it so. Anyway, modified frame and fork steering tube aside, the components on the build are pretty special as you expect, all chosen purely for their low weight. Even a SRAM Red Explore rear mech has been stripped down to its component parts and the metal or alloy parts replaced with carbon fiber to save 33 grams. And the resulting weight of the build is just 5.64 kilograms with pedals and fat mountain bike tires. And that is pretty damn light and lighter than the 7.2 kilos of a stock S-Works Crux. So a big weight saving over the bike you can buy from the shop. Now, would you ride such a lightweight gravel bike or is it too light for you? Would you trust it to ride off-road? Am I jealous that my Crux isn't as light as this one? Maybe a little bit, but personally, building such a lightweight bike doesn't really do it for me. I mean, it's amazing to experience what they are doing and pushing the limits of weight in this way. Uh, not something I'm personally that interested in, but glad to see people are doing that and showing what can be done. So pretty amazing. I put a link to a full video on YouTube down below. Definitely worth a watch if you are keen to see how he saved so much weight on this bike. Okay, let me tell you about Squarespace, the sponsor of today's video. Using Squarespace to build a brand new website really can be any easier. And now even simpler as well, thanks to Blueprint, which uses AI to guide you through the process of building a totally personal website bespoke to your exact needs. Simply answer a few questions and hey presto, your online presence is generated from the ground up just for you. You can then customize the website however you need using a fluid engine drag and drop interface and change the styling and then add any number of tools you need to build a website for any purpose. From launching an online store, using flexible payments, offering customers a chance to buy now and pay later. Whether you sell physical or digital products or services, Squarespace is a platform that makes it all super easy and simple. And best of all, you can start right now with a free trial using my link down below. And if you enjoy it, there's 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain name. Anyway, check out Squarespace, link down below, definitely worth using. I've been building my website on Squarespace recently and it's a lot of fun to easily customize and build a website and get it up and running in minutes. Right, let's talk about endurance road bikes because today BMC has launched a brand new road machine endurance road bike. 
Now, the original Grand Fondo, as it used to be called, launched 12 years ago, and this is the third generation model, and a lot has changed. Although visually, it looks very similar to the old bike, but there are quite a few changes and some useful updates if you're in the market for an endurance road bike. The bigger change to a new bike is a move to accepting 40 millimeter wide tires, the same as the Roubaix and the Trek Domani. But for some reason, the company is only specking the bikes with 30 mil wide tires, which seems a bit odd when Giant and Specialized are specking their endurance bikes with 32 mil wide tires. And people are running 30 mil wide tires on their road race bikes these days. So not going wider seems a bit of a missed opportunity really. Another common detail we are seeing on endurance road bikes is in-frame storage, which Trek and Specialized have done before with a storage compartment inside a down tube. A really smart feature. I think it makes a lot of sense on both gravel bikes, where we've seen it first, and mountain bikes before that, of course, and endurance bikes, because you are doing a long ride, you're carrying a pump, spare tube, CO2, tire levers and having that inside a frame away from the elements and not your saddlebag makes a lot of sense. The geometry has been mildly tweaked on the new bike as well. That improved tire clearance normally comes with a longer wheelbase and longer chainstays, but the chainstays have grown by just five millimeters and the wheelbase is between one and three millimeters longer across the range, across the size range. So a very small um, stretching of that wheelbase despite the much bigger tire clearance. The stack height has been increased as well for more rider comfort with fewer spaces needed, which is a good move. And the bottom bracket is now five millimeters lower for a bit more stability for you more inside the frame. Yet, despite all the changes, we still have all the hallmarks of the old road machine. The tune compliance concept or TCC for short in the shape of the fork and the frame section designed to improve compliance, a D-shaped seat post and internal routing. The last gen road machine launched four years ago, was one of the first endurance bikes to get internal routing. The new road machine is available at several levels. Prices start from just over $3,000 and go right up to a staggering $13,000 for Durace Di2. Now, the main topic for discussion today is the fact that the pros no longer use endurance bikes for racing. And anybody watching Tour Flanders and Paris-Roubaix over the last two weekends we will have seen an amazing performance by Matteo van der Poel, absolutely crushing the competition and all his rivals on a par of eight and cobbles. And he did it all on the same Canyon Air Road CFR aero race bike that uses for all the other stages and races he does for the rest of the season, from Tour de France to the Ava Monument to Cobble Classics. In fact, most of the peloton were riding their regular race bikes, like the Tarmac SL8 and so on. But the main change on these race bikes being tyres, wire tyres were fitted for both races. 30 and 32 millimeter wire tyres were popular and common setups, mostly tubeless with inserts as well. Matteo van der Poel's actual bike used Vittoria Corsa control tyres in a 32 mil width, and according to an article on Cycling News, were inflated to just 50 psi. Those tyres, by the way, were on Shimano carbon wheels, which use a hooked rim design. And he apparently used foam inserts as well, likely ones like these from Vittoria, which I've just got in for testing to see what all the fuss is about. Most of the pros have their bikes set up with these, and we've seen some very public examples of that over the last few weeks, haven't we? So I'm keen to try these, see what they are like to fit to a wheel set, and whether they make a big difference or not, and whether we should all be running these in our tuber tires, or if they're just a load of extra faff and expense as well. But apparently, Matthew van der Poel rode another bike for the first 100 kilometers of the race, which is on relatively smooth roads, on a bike with 28 mil wide tires to save energy, and then switched this bike with fatter tires before the first cobble sections, which is pretty smart. And we have seen pros doing that in the past, have an aero bike for that first 100K, and then their cobble bike for the actual cobbles. This is a far cry from 10 years ago when endurance bikes were being developed at a rapid rate for just these races. The Cannondale Synapse, the Special Roubaix, the Trek de Marnie, all endurance bikes developed for the riders in these races and with much input from their teams and their pros to make sure the buyers can meet their demands in these races. And this was largely because race bikes of the era weren't able to fit wide tires and weren't very smooth riding at all. 
However, most modern race bikes, like the Specialized Tama SL8 and many others, now take up to a 32 mm wide tire, and the general improvements in compliance in those race bikes have led the pros to stick with these race bikes. So the endurance bike just isn't needed by the pros anymore. And the other thing to bear in mind is that the pros don't really want comfort. The one thing they always ask for is more stiffness. That's been a constant in the development of race bikes throughout the decades. And yes, they want a bit of comfort for reduced fatigue, to have more energy at the end of the race, but they're not riding these races to enjoy the cobble sections like we do as amateurs. They want the lightest bike, the fastest bike, they don't mind being battered because they are built differently to us. They ride a lot more, they spend a lot more time in a saddle, and they are strong and fit, and they don't mind taking that punishment. So endurance bikes no longer being used by a pro peloton anymore, which is a big difference to how it was 10 years ago when we saw most of the riders on endurance bikes. So a big shift from that reliance on endurance bikes in those races to regular road bikes and really shows how the development of road bikes or regular race bikes have moved to a position where they can be used in such brutal races. But while the pros are no longer using endurance road bikes, I still think they are the best option for many regular riders, enthusiast cyclists who are riding at the weekend, doing long rides. They don't ride bikes nearly as much as the pros and having a bit more comfort from bigger tires, frame features, and that more relaxed geometry from a higher stack and shorter reach is definitely a better fit than trying to emulate the pros as many people do. And if you want to see a video on the reasons why I think an endurance road bike is so suited to so many of us, then watch the video linked up above. Right, finally, are you a budding home mechanic but need to buy your tools to work on your bike yourself? Well, I just received this amazing toolkit from Feedback Sports for testing to review very soon. And it is an amazing setup. You open up and you have all these tools to work on your bike. So it's an amazing all-in-one toolkit briefcase with just about every tool you need for every maintenance job on your bike. There are 20 tools with 26 functions here from breaking your chain to removing the cassette true in your rotors, removing your pedals, and much, much more. The screwdrivers are magnetic as well. There are Torx tools down here, every tool you need, and a space down here, which I really like, sort of an expansion section for adding your own tools with different jobs, like a shock pump, um, and other tools you might need, um, which are particular to your own bike. So an amazing toolkit, uh, not cheap, but, probably cheaper than buying all the tools individually over the years as I've done. And if you want a quick starting, ready to go home toolkit, that looks amazing. So ideal for your home workshop as I have here, or sling in the back of your van, or my van anyway, when you're going on a road trip and you want all the tools you need and not just a little multi-tool to adjust your bike. Because I've been on rides, been at races, events, when you're getting the bike ready and you have some sort of mechanical issue that's come out of nowhere. So having an amazing toolkit like this, pretty cool, I reckon. Anyway, I've put a link to that down below. Go check it out, full review coming very soon.